Okay, today we're going to start talking about the idea of a semi-permeable membrane. And so when we think about the cell's membrane, uh, it surrounds the cell, yes. But in order for products to come out of the cell, products like protein, which the ribosomes are making, or in order for water to come in or out so the cell can maintain homeostasis, this membrane has to be permeable. And think about permeable as permit. So it permits some things to come in and out of the cell, just depending on their size and their shape. Um, and so what we're going to talk about today is sort of how it does that and some of the methods that we'll look at um, in terms of getting the things out of the cell that it needs to get out, like vacuoles, um, and getting things in that it needs, like water and food. Um, and so the cell membrane, it does surround the cell. It is semi-permeable, and it's made of a phospho... Oh, no. of a phospholipid bilayer. So what is a phospholipid? Well, we have a lipid, obviously, and then we have this little thing called a phosphate. So if I'm looking at this kind of drawing of the cell, this is the phospholipid bilayer. So each of these little round heads is a phosphate head. And then if you notice, attached to the little, little balls are little tails. And that's my lipid chain. So every, I'm just gonna kind of draw it for you. We have a little phosphate head, and then we have these lipid tails that are coming off of it. And this is important because the phosphates are polar, and the lipids we know are nonpolar. So thinking about the fact that the cell is mainly made up of water, and on the outside you mostly have water as well, these phosphate heads will orient themselves so that they're close to the water. Remember, like dissolves like. So the phosphate heads go near the water, and the lipids stay away. Think about oil and water, right? The oil and the water separate, and so that's exactly what these little heads are doing inside of this membrane. So that means that we have this little bi, um, bi layer here, where we have phosphate heads are all lining up to get close to the water and their tails are lining up in the opposite direction to stay away. So it creates this sort of membrane, this double layer membrane um, on the outside of the cell. Go ahead, I'm oh, sorry. Um, and then if you look at this, these are my proteins. So when we're thinking about the idea of being semi-permeable, a big part of that is actually this idea that we have proteins in the cell, uh, in the cell membrane that are helping with transportation. Remember, that's one of the roles of proteins is that they help with transportation. So we're gonna go ahead and pause the video and answer this question for me. Okay, so thinking about the different types of proteins, we've already talked about all the functions of proteins. There are actually different types within this cell membrane. So just to be clear, you have this phospholipid bilayer, and inside of that little bilayer, every once in a while, we'll have a protein, and those proteins can have different roles within the cell. Probably the simplest type of protein is just a transport protein, so it has an open channel, and it allows certain things in, chemicals, So they have a very specific channel and they'll just let sort, um, certain, certain chemicals or certain um, products inside or out. Next, you should already be familiar with enzymes. Sometimes we have enzymes that are attached to the cell membrane and these enzymes catalyze reactions.
and allow the products in. So remember, enzymes have a very specific shape, and so they will react with just certain things that are floating outside of the cell. Once those have become products, they'll come into the cell. So very specific enzymes on the, out of the outside of the cell membrane. We next have proteins that are used for attachment, so these provide extra support. to the cytoplasm, or sorry, cytoskeleton. So remember that the cytoskeleton is made of proteins. We have a couple of proteins on the outside um, that are used to support that cytoskeleton a little bit more. Cell-to-cell -cell recognition is really important if we're thinking about getting into tissues. These proteins are used for communication. They're also used for attachment. So that I can have two cells connect to each other and then more and more until I start to build a tissue or a group of cells. Finally we, ha finally, we have signal transduction. So these actually allow, sort of like an enzyme, allow they allow chemicals to bond and then that sends a signal inside the cell. And that signal is usually related to maintaining homeostasis. Okay, so lots of different proteins. Um, the question down here, it says integral and peripheral proteins. Essentially, these are all integral. They're all in the lipid bilayer. So go ahead and contrast their role with the peripheral proteins, proteins that are inside of the cell.